Well, welcome back to another session of getting started with C++. Today, I wanted to talk about what is a variable and why do we have variables? So imagine you pull out your trusty calculator and the only problems that your trusty calculator could solve were one plus one or two times 10 or 20 minus five or 100 divided by 10. You couldn't change it to one plus two or five times 10 or anything like that. It's just the buttons you see on the screen or the, the operations you, you can perform. So this wouldn't be very useful. Um, so when the values that we're adding or multiplying or subtracting can't change or vary, um, we're stuck with just a predefined set of values uh, that we can perform these math operations on. Again, not very useful. I don't think a calculator like this exists. But if you were solving a homework problem and lo and behold, all you needed was two times 10, then you'd be in luck. But if you needed two times 11, you'd have to find a different calculator. So this is basically you know, less than useless. There's no reason that anybody would want a calculator like this. Um, so what we need is a calculator where the values that we're sending to the addition or subtraction or multiplication could vary. And therein, lies the concept of variables. So if you think about this, shall we say, much improved calculator, I could type in two and hit multiplication and then 10 and hit enter, and hopefully 20 would pop out. Um, but I could also do three times 10 and 30 would pop out. So the operands that we're sending to addition or multiplication or division are allowed to vary. So what's a variable in programming? So a variable is a, a reserve storage location that can hold a specific piece of data. And, and you as the programmer have control over what data goes in that variable. Um, also variables have a name attached to them. So um, instead of having to remember uh, something like a memory address, which you may be unfamiliar with, more on that later, um, you just need to give each value or each variable a name. Um, over here in the little example over here, I have, hey, Bob. Uh, so people have names, objects have names, pets have names, um, and so do variables. And lastly, a variable has a specific type of data that it can hold. So for instance, you don't put books in the freezer because freezers don't hold books. Could you force, could you put a book in a freezer? Yes. Does it make sense? Probably not. Just like you wouldn't want to put your favorite frozen pizza on your bookshelf. Not for very long, at least. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about where, back to the first point, where uh, the storage location is uh, soon. So just kind of jumping in with a few example variable declarations. You'll notice we have three here. Uh, the first is a grade variable. So imagine this was storing the grade on an exam um, and it's an integer. Secondly, we have a response variable that's a char, which we'll come to find out is a character. So it can hold a single character like an A or a P or something. So imagine this was a variable that we were gonna ask the user to enter some value from a menu or something like that. We're gonna store it in response. And then everyone's favorite floating point number, pi. Um, and we're gonna talk more about these int, char, float. And just to warn you, some people say car instead of char. Six of one kind, half a dozen the other. I say char. It's not that big of a deal either way, uh, but it stands for character. So when we're talking about variables, where are they stored? Uh, when you turn your computer on and you start any program, uh, the program's gonna be allocated some particular part of your random access memory. So variables are gonna be stored in RAM. And it, it certainly gets more complicated than that. So this is kind of a high level conceptual overview, but just think about um, your RAM as a set of cubbies that where each cubby hole has 
um, an, an identifier associated with it, like 1020, 1021, 1022. So these numbers that I have over to the right of these green cubbies. Um, now, computers are great with numbers. They don't like letters, words, sentences so much. Obviously, they can operate on these things, but when you get down to the bare metal, computers are operating on numbers. Um, and so uh, the in, inside the computer, each one of these memory locations or these cubbies is gonna have what we call an address. Um, oftentimes you'll see them written in hexadecimal, which is just something that's kind of like the decimal number system, but a little bit, there's, there's a few more options for each digit. Um, hopefully we'll have a video on that uh, in the future. Um, but humans don't deal with addresses quite as well as computers do. So 1022 versus something like grade or pi, it's easier to remember that I have a variable called pi than that I have a variable called 1023. And so when you take your C++ code and convert it to a program that the computer can execute, uh, the computer is going to decide or the compiler is going to decide where each of the variables that you've put in your code, so int grade, char response, float pi, it's going to decide where to put them in memory. And so um, whenever you want to refer to grade in the future, you'll just be able to say grade rather than worrying about 1021 or 1023 for pi and so on and so forth. Now there are a few rules for variable names that you should keep in mind. Um, so first, a variable name can be composed of letters, digits, and underscores, okay? Um, however, it must start with a letter or an underscore, and it can't contain any special characters or spaces. As much as we might wanna put spaces because it makes sense, or it might be how we write a, an essay or some other paper or blog post, uh, we can't put spaces in our variable names. So over here on the right, I have some examples of good var variable names, I should say legal variable names. So the green check, and then uh, illegal variable names that violate the rules of the C++ language. So you'll notice uh, under the green check column, I have the underscore response, underscore project, underscore grade, dimension 01. These are all legal variable names. Um, name, um, the response without an underscore, all valid legal variable names. If you come over to the red X column, the no, no column, uh, you'll notice that in the first example, uh, there's a space which renders it illegal. So this is not a valid variable name. Uh, the second one, it's illegal because there's an exclamation point in it. So that makes it um, an invalid variable name. And then you'll notice in the last example, the variable starts with a digit. So that would render that particular 01 underscore dimension would be an illegal variable name. And then lastly, let's talk just a little bit about data types. So as I mentioned earlier, whenever you are um, declaring variables, you have to tell the compiler what the type of data that's going to be stored in that variable. Back to the example of the freezer and the book. If you were going to declare a freezer variable or a place where you could put frozen pizzas, you would declare a freezer variable. And if you were defining a place where you could put books, you might define a bookshelf variable. Um, to start out with, we're going to use the fundamental data types that are provided by the C++ language. And I have some of them listed over here to the right. Um, first is uh, short, uh, int, and long. These are integer data types. Um, this means they don't have a floating point or a decimal portion. Then there are floating point types, float and double, they do have a floating point portion, so they have a, a decimal portion. So something like pi, uh, financial information, where there's two decimal places, things of that nature, uh, you could store in floating point variables. Um, and then there's one that's kind of special called the char, which we talked a little bit about earlier. Um, in a future video, I'm going to spend some time talking 
about these variables in more detail and what the limitations are to each of the variables, uh, I'm sorry, the data types. And so uh, check that video out.